As I put in some years in this journey, I become more familiar with the strategies of the enemy in sweeping off couples from off their feet. And one of the reasons, one of the things, one of the strategies, one of, the, one of those things that make him or instruments he uses to do this is what we are looking at today. As I put in some years now in this journey, I become more and more familiar with the strategies of the enemy in sweeping of couples off their feet. And uh, one of them is what we are discussing today. Please take note of the following. Number one, it is not only the bad things, bad information, bad ideas, bad presence, bad jaws, bad friends, and so on that, that are harmful or that kills. Number two, it is not every good thing, good information, good idea, good opinions, good friends, good business, good jobs that make one good. Number three, the devil or the evil one does not only use bad things against couples. Very often again, he now uses more, more, more often than not, even this time, good ideas, Good jobs, good, good people, good information, good reasons to get couples off their feet. And if you study the word of God, you will understand that this have been his strategy from the beginning to today. Remember that when he came against the Lord Jesus Christ, he asked him, if asked him, if you be the son of God, he knew that Jesus was the son of God. Again, he said, oh, he took, Bible said he took him, in Matthew chapter 4, he took him to the pinnacle of the temple and told him, if you are the son of God, jump down from there. And well, all these things, generally, if you study the temptations of Jesus Christ, what, what and what, what is the thing? The simple point there is, he was not just, he knew that Jesus was hungry. Jesus also knew he was hungry. But the point is that he was actually looking for control by Jesus doing the word of God. He used the word of God for Jesus to try to, to see if he could obey the word of God, and obeying the word of God becomes obeying him. He being in control of the Lord Jesus. That is to say that the devil can still use the, the word of God against you. He can use the word of God to get you off your marriage. He can still use the word of God to get you off your relationship. He can use anything. The word of God is the highest, highest thing if you ask me on earth. So if the devil could use it against Jesus, quit he's still using it today. He can use it against anyone. If you ask me, that's the reason why the Apostle Paul wrote, he says, for we are not, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, he says, for we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. And you understand, you definitely... It's not just that we are not ignorant. You too have to understand that the, that same strategy of the enemy is still what is happening today. Paul said, "Less we should be taking. He should be. We sh less Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of the device of the enemy. And you definitely have to be. You have to understand that." You, if you are not led by the Lord Jesus, if you are not led by the Spirit of God, definitely you are going to be ignorant of the enemy because you do not know much. This is part of the things we are discussing today. Most people who are uh, who are complaining for a bad spouse today, who are complaining for a bad marriage, a bad relationship, or other challenges that they are having in marriage, bad spouse, you know, you know, bad child, bad everything. Some of those things and the other circumstances that we might not be able to mention or because of time, most likely some of those people jumped in the, into those things without asking questions. They didn't ask God. They didn't ask God. They didn't ask God. Because they didn't ask God, they jumped into them. So today we are here to discuss a topic that says, let God lead you. Let God lead you. Paul saying in, again in Romans, say for the, to be carnally minded, is death and to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Say, but if you are led by the spirit, if you by the spirit put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Romans chapter 6 and verses 12 to 13. 
The days of the body here are our personal opinions motivated by our limited level of knowledge and understanding. That is to say, this is the reason why we are talking about you allowing God. Our, the deeds of the body, our personal opinions that are motivated by our limited level of knowledge, our limited level of understanding. Now, allow God to lead you. What does it mean? Does it mean that we should be idle, not doing anything, not using our head, not using our senses, leaving every responsibility over to, to God, not just doing anything at all, shifting all troubles upon God's head? Ah, no, no, no. That's not what it means. Today, I want us to look at what it means for one to allow God to lead him. And why is it imperative? Why is it so compulsory that we allow God to lead us? Let's start from the very last one. And we're going to look at three different groups of persons on earth. There are three different groups of persons on earth. I will kindly and coolly discuss them as we look at what it means for God to lead us and why it is imperative for God to lead us. What and what are the reasons? I'll give you three and I'm done. Number one is man is a living spirit living in a physical body. Man is a spirit being that is living in a physical body. And so actually we participate or operate everything we do as human beings we do them consciously and unconsciously, knowingly and unknowingly, from the spiritual realm, without knowing. We participate in the spirit, and it manifests physically, unknowingly. Now, I said we're going to discuss three di different groups of persons on earth. There are three different groups of persons on earth, on earth based on this particular point I have made now, that man is a spirit that is living in the body. The first group of persons are those who believe, who know, who believe, and who understand that man is a spirit and lives his life from the spiritual realm, and it manifests in the physical. And there are this particular group, there are only few persons who belong to this group, few great men of God who have great understanding, few great Christians who are matured, who have great understanding, few and most of, more and more, the occults, the witch doctors, the native doctors, the, all the spiritists, they understand that man is a spirit and the life of man is lived from the spirit and is controlled from the spirit, even though we are in the physical realm. It is lived from the spirit and controlled from the spirit. That's the first group. The second group are those who believe that, well, yes, man is a spirit, but everything cannot be spiritual. Some things should be physical, including my marriage, including my work, in my decisions. Is there everything that should be spiritual? Is there everything you call spiritual? Some are spiritual, I believe that. Yes, some are physical. Some demonic, att some attacks are spiritual. Some attacks are physical. Some problems I have, they are spiritual. Some problems I have, they are physical. Some things that happen to me at my place of work, they are spiritual. Some things that happen to me at place of work, they are physical. It's not everything that is spiritual. Forget about that. Don't over-spiritualize the world. It's not so. That's the second group of people who live on earth. And most people who say they are Christians, who are in church, they belong to this group. Most people who are in church, I repeat, most people who say they are Christians, they belong to this group who say, oh, marriage is partially spiritual, partially, partially physical. My problems are partially spiritual, they are partially physical. You know, what my child is doing, partially spiritual, is partially physical. What my husband is doing, is partially spiritual, partially physical, and so on and so forth. This is the most people in church, most people who are Christians, most people who, who say they believe in God, they are born again, they belong to this group. And then the last group of, are the people who say that, well, I don't believe what you are saying, that life is spiritual, I'm just a physical person, and I don't care what you are talking about. Mm -hmm. Life is not spiritual. I am in the physical realm. Now, nah, that's the last group. Now, majority of the people who are living on earth today or who have lived and died are in this last group. Now, this assertion, this particular view of people is what has made 
about 90% of the people, men who are born on earth, not to have fulfilled their, those who are dead, most, about 90% of people who lived on earth and who are dead now, they live without fulfilling their destiny. They live without accomplishing the purpose for which they were born. It is because of this view that no, I was just born here. Everything that's happening here, anytime I'm done here, it's all over. <laughs> Most of the people too, who are living today now, who are living, who are living here now, now as you are hearing me today, and some of the people you know who are living on earth are also in this group. And they are the, that, that's the reason why people are not being able to accomplish their destinies, accomplish their, 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 their God-given purposes, the reason for which they were born. The reason is because as spirits, you need to operate your life on the, spirit, otherwise, or, or the spiritual realm. Otherwise, you cannot conquer in the physical realm. Why? Because the spiritual is in charge of the physical. The spiritual controls the physical realm. So this is why man, we human beings, we need the guidance and the leading of the father of spirits. Hebrews are called God, the father of spirits. If we must, in all things, not just in one thing, in all things, not just in some things, if we must prosper, and if we must live victorious here on earth, Otherwise, you will be at the mercy of the spiritual forces, which whether you believe that they are there or not, you will be at their mercy. Why? Because they know you before ever you were born. They were there before your parents were born. They were there even before your community was formed to be a community. We're not even talking about your parents. They know you. They know your name. They know the name of your father. They know the name of your mother. They know the name of your grandfather. They know what happened 200 years ago. They know what happened 1,000 years ago in your community. They know they were there even before you came. <laughs> they were there. So when you visit them, when you visit them, you know, like some, some people who visit them, they are agents, family, those who work with family spirits, they call you your name. They tell you your name. They tell you the circumstances that surrounded their birth. They know what happened, how your mother gave back to you. They know how, whether she stayed a long time or not. They know. They are there. They are there. And they are, if you don't allow the father of spirits to lead you, you will simply live your life on earth at their mercy. Let me repeat. If you don't allow the spirit, the, the father of spirits, who is God himself, to lead you, you will simply live your life on earth at their mercy. Yeah, because whether you believe they are there or not, it doesn't stop it, their, their It doesn't change anything. It doesn't still stop stop their <laughs> effect. You know, whatever they want to do to you, it doesn't stop them. That you don't believe, it doesn't stop their activities. Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. So don't be surprised when you people visit them and they told you the man told me everything. Don't be thrilled. Don't clap hands for them because mm -hmm. they knew everything. They knew everything that surrounded their bed. They know the day you got job, the application, whether it was a good job or not a good job. Everything they know <laughs> must stop here so that we waste all the time. The second reason, the second reason is, listen, things not seen are more powerful than the things that are seen. The things that are not seen are more powerful than the things that are not seen. Paul said in, in the apostle in, the, in Corinthians says, Second Corinthians chapter 10 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we are not warring after the flesh. Listen, listen. You see, can see the way I'm taking it gradually. If if the, the second reason is that though, the things that are not seen are more powerful than the things that are seen. Now, have you ever asked yourself these questions? Why is it that? The things that are not seen are the things that scare people. Now, this is a, one of the points whereby science and the religion, why science and the Bible, they are in the same place. The things that are not seen are more powerful. For example, nobody sees cancer. Medical science and the, and the faith, everybody believes the, they are said this. Cancer is not seen. But once you hear, no, no, you hear, that doctor tells you you have cancer, you're already in trouble. You're already in trouble. <laughs> you don't see it. A few years ago, 
They told us that there is COVID-19. Nobody saw COVID-19 with his eyes, but everybody was scared. Now, <laughs> what fool was that you use against your spouse? He doesn't see, she doesn't see it. But these things create fear uh, in us. And the fear, in turn, begins to control us. The things that are not seen are more powerful than the things that are seen. But we even confess it in Corinthians. Electricity, you don't see wire. You don't see electricity. But make mistake and touch an electricity that is of higher voltage. He will the electricity will teach you a lesson that you won't forget in a hurry if you make it alive. You don't see. You just see it as cable. You see. Now, let me go to the good one. On the other hand, too, there are good things that are not seen that are very powerful. Things like praise. Things like prayer. You know, things like God's word. Like I'm speaking. You don't see what I'm speaking, but you are hearing it. And it's working on you. It's getting you either angry or making you happy. <laughs> it's a nonsense. Oh, what is this guy saying? Oh, you're happy. Say, right on. Right on. But you're not seeing it. Praise. You sing praise, and praise pulls down the walls of Jericho of your life, but it's not seen. Prayer, you pray here in Canada, and somebody in Africa is healed. Jesus spoke his word, and the person in a distance of walking like one, two days gets healed. They are not seen, but they, when, when they, they are very powerful. They create an atmosphere of faith in you, and by that faith in you, you now you are now strengthened to attack whatever because Jesus Himself even said that the words that I speak to you they are spirits, they are life. Words are spirits and they are life. Words also can be death, they can kill, but they are not seen. So the things that are not seen are more powerful than the things that are seen. This is the second reason why you need divine guidance. It is because man, we men, we are living in our, our lives spiritually as spirits. We are the, the spirits that we are daily. So whether we realize it or we do not realize it, we are humans. We are spirits living our lives spiritually, participating in the spiritual realm, either foolishly because we don't know it is existing, mm -hmm. or half knowledge of well it's not this matter it's not spiritual it's not spiritual let's leave it it's not a spiritual matter or those who understand it mm -hmm. and they operate their, their lives from there now let me tell you let me ask you these few questions have you ever asked yourself why divorce suppression is so powerful in our time to the extent that a child of god will wake up one morning who knows that god say i hate divorce and choose to drag his or her husband his or his or her spouse mm -hmm. rather to the court and ask for divorce, irrespective of everything, every every effort made by anybody, by the church, by family members, by friends, to say no, please stay, don't go through this. Fathers, parents will say, please don't do this. I have been through this; it was painful. Please don't try it. Let's see a way out of it. The person will say no. I must go through divorce. Why? The reason is because. It is operated in the race of the spirit. Once it takes place in the race of the spirit, it can only take God of the God of heaven to dislodge it. Otherwise, it must still happen physically. Even some of the people who are going through divorce today don't even know what is making them to go through divorce. Their eyes are only open when they are out of the marriage, when the marriage is finally divorced, when they are separated. And say, finally, we are separated. Their eyes are not open. So, uh, I started missing Lily. Uh, I started missing you. I uh, want, but you, when you were there, everybody, they made every effort to make you know, we can still walk through this thing. We can still solve this, this problem. You say, no. The reason is because it has the, the force, the powers that are behind separation and divorce are not beyond what the eyes of man can see. They are in, if, that is even what is motivating even men of God today. They are not preaching it. They are not teaching it. Because the forces, that's why even you have to, even as a preacher, you have to be careful what you are teaching. If you are not led 
If you are not led, be sure that what you are speaking, as a mother teacher, as anybody, be sure, as a pastor, be sure that what you are saying, you are being led by God to say it. Okay. Otherwise, devils are still using preachers today to make people to leave marriages. They are using preachers today to lead them the wrong way. So it's not because if devil could use the word of God, to try to sweep Jesus off his feet. Who told you that devil cannot use a pastor to make people to do what the word of God, what God doesn't want them to do? Who told you that? If devil could come to Jesus, who is the living word of God himself, and use the word of God too, written word of God, to try to sweep him off his feet, who told you that somebody who says he's a pastor, who is a teacher, cannot teach the wrong thing? See, you have to be led by the spirit, both as the person hearing and the person teaching. You have to know. This is the reason why couples, you know, you know, just people who a husband <laughs> who who just wakes up in the morning. This, see, the, the point is, let me say this: couples need to know that as a spirit, we our marriage is more operated in the realms of the spirit. That's why the attacks that come to us, they even come to us more and more in the realms of the spirit. Listen. If you are doubting what I'm saying, why is it that maybe you have, it has not happened to you, but you would have had it? Why is it that they say this woman was pregnant and the spirit slept with her in dream? And as soon as she wakes up, the blood, the whole pregnancy goes. Have you ever asked yourself? These things, they are because life live, is lived from spiritual realm. Have you ever, have you, those who on the side, I don't know from African origin, where a woman's baby is changing the womb. There is change in the womb, even before the baby is born. Destinies are changed. Because life is lived from the spiritual realm. Whether we un see, whether you understand it or not, whether you accept it or not, whether you believe it or not, you are marrying your marriage, you are living your life, you are doing your business, you are working your job from the realms of the spirit. This is the reason why you must ask the Lord and allow him to lead you. The reason is because couples, we live our lives, those who are married, we live our lives in this, in, in our spirits, in this, in everyday life, here on earth, unknowingly and unconsciously. And the forces behind the things that we are talking about, they are there. Have you ever asked yourself, why is it that a husband wakes up in the morning? The husband that used to be good, wakes up in the morning and starts a different life. The child that used to be good wakes up and starts a different life. The child that used to pass the exam wakes up and starts a different life. The child that used to love God before wakes up, doesn't love God again. I am not saying that, I'm not saying that, that if a, a, a husband, I have never, I have not let him leave my hands on her, wakes up and now he's doing the thing. No, I want you to understand that these things are operated in the realms of the spirit. And some of if you don't understand it, you will simply end up being handicapped in their and hands. You begin to fight their own battles. You fight their own battles. Yeah. You to see him as the mm. enemy, you begin to see the child as, a, as the enemy. Mm. Or if you have the understanding that something has gone wrong, mm. if you will allow God to lead you at that point and tell you what happened, mm. you can come to the Lord that time, mm. you know, in prayer. If you can see the face of the Lord concerning that particular issue, mm. God will make you know that this is the reason, this is what's going on. You understand that there's a battle going on on the head of that child that there's a battle going on on the head of that man that's mm -hmm. your spouse and then you'll be able to fight the right battle mm -hmm. you know many persons are just spiritual matters they're handling it physically can you imagine something is wrong spiritually and you are you are at every day you're fighting them every day both of you are exchanging words tell me how exchange of words in a relationship mm -hmm. tell me how quarreling tell me how even fighting you know you raising your hand or you what tell me how you can even solve the problem she doesn't, she hasn't disrespected you before. And all of a sudden, she starts doing that. Mm. Didn't you think that something has gone wrong? Didn't you think, and you feel that you can use violence to bring her to order? Mm -hmm. I'm going to discipline her. Mm -hmm. I will make her know I'm the man. Mm -hmm. All these people who have been practicing using physical, you know, physical, applying so, physical solutions mm -hmm. to spiritual matters, have they really gotten the, the, no. the results? And I keep asking them, what have you achieved at the end of the day? Did you achieve anything? Mm. So when we, when we understand that, like he's trying to explain, that the life we are living 
We are spirit, spirit beings living in a physical world that most of the things that happen to us are being controlled by the spirit realm. Mm. Then it will position us to fight the right, to apply the right measures when something happens in the home. Thank you, baby. Let me just give you this last example and then I'll take the third one and I think I'm done because of time. Have you ever asked yourself, why is it that a man and a woman, they are married, they say this wife, that is that cannot conceive. The reason is that, and they remember, medicine have checked the person, she's okay. What it means that what is keeping the woman from conceiving is beyond what the physical eyes can see. Yes. They say this man cannot impregnate his wife, this husband, is because what is keeping him from impregnating his wife is, is spiritual, it's not physical. Doctor have checked, checked. All the systems are working well. And the semen he's producing still have everything. They say, okay, madam, just go home with your husband. Everything will still be okay. With time, at God's time, it will happen. Most people, it happens at God's time. And most people, never, it never happens. Why? Because it didn't, it, it was, the, the particular matter was not conquered in the realms of the spirit. Have you, okay, why do they even say that some men have what is called low sperm count? Same erection, same product, ejaculation, same production of semen, but they say that it's low. How? Medicine says it's low. And because it is low, there cannot be, this man cannot impregnate the wife. What actually happened? The same, the same man, the same thing, the same country, the same with another man. Who? It, what happened? These things are in the realms of the spirit. And if you don't understand that your marriage, everything that is happening there is spiritual. You will keep being living your life at the mercy of spiritual forces of darkness. That the word of God told us very well how much hard they are against us. Paul says, says, says for we are, I think Romans chapter Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, between no 10 to 12. He says, So though we are flesh and blood, okay. He said that we are not worrying against flesh and blood. We're also worrying against what? Spiritual wickedness is principalities, powers, spiritual forces of darkness. Why can they, have you asked, how will a woman be pregnant and the ninth month she will not deliver? Everything is okay. Tenth month, eleventh month, twelfth month, thirteenth month, the woman is still pregnant. Not in, no, you, you need to understand. These are spiritual things. You need to know that even when you are pregnant, it is pregnant, the devil have no. You have to know. You have to know. You have to know. You have to know this. And then the, let me take the last point, and then I'm done today. Our sight, why should we allow God to lead us? Our sight is short. Not the one that the, the, those who... Uh, so it's not, not the physical short-sightedness mm -hmm. that makes us to take glasses. No. Mm -hmm. As humans, our sight is very, very short. Remember the first one. Man is a spirit. Second one, the things that are not seen are more powerful than the things that are seen. These are the reasons why you need to allow God to control, to lead you. The third one is, our sight is short. Living in this physical body, I must tell you, is the greatest, one of the greatest challenges of every human being towards his success and his victory. Whether Christian or not Christian, non-Christian, whether believer in church, or um, say some of the people who say these are unbelievers, they are in church, but they are unbelievers. We go do those who are any religion. The greatest, one of the greatest challenges of man is living in this physical body. That is why as a student, even for you want to read your book and be the best in class, your body will not allow you to read, except when you force it. That's why as an athlete, if you don't, you don't control your body. Paul said, promote my body. If you don't bring your body down as an athlete, you cannot achieve what you want to achieve in your, in your career as an athlete, as a footballer, as anything. You have to control your body. That's why you see them training. They train. They train. Those That is to control the body, to force the body, to control this body that you are seeing here, that you think is something that we are dressing, covering, painting. You know, the, it, it, that's one of the greatest enemy of man because man is not a body, man is a spirit. And you've got to know this. What is, what is, you need to know. And so because of that, the body makes our, our, our view to be very, very short. We don't see far. 
even some of the things that you think that they are right, mm -hmm. they are going to be the wrong at the end. The Bible says there is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end of that way is the way is what? Destruction. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. So you think it's right based on who you are as a man, what you can see, you think it's right. But unfortunately, <coughs> it's going to end up in destruction. And that's why you need God to lead you. If you do not, it is difficult for a human being born on earth to achieve any great success, whether you are a Christian or you are not. Even those who invented things, they, they kind of went into meditations to leave this realm to achieve the things they achieved. So you need to allow, as a child of God, listen to me, you need to allow God to lead you. And I want to talk to, to the, the, you, a single person who has not yet gotten married. You, because of what I just said now, because your sight is so short, you need to allow God to lead you in making decisions, especially decisions concerning the person you will get married to. See, I want to say this. Most divorce cases and separations that we have already seen, or you are already witnessing wherever you are now, they have been there. They have been there. It's just that it just manifested now. It started the day you made the decision to live with the wrong person. <laughs> you, that day you made the wrong decision to live with the wrong person, to enter a, the day you made the decision to enter a wrong, to, live, to, to enter a wrong relationship, to live with the wrong person. And then that is the day it just started. I must repeat, the divorce cases and separations that you have seen already, and the ones you are seeing now, and maybe if you are struggling with one now, it, is, it didn't start today. It has been there, only that it's manifesting now. It began with the day you made the wrong decision to start that wrong relationship with the wrong person. That's the day it started. It, it, it didn't just start now. And if you are married, it started that day that you made that choice. And that's why you need to allow God as a single person now to, for you, in the decisions you are making. Then if you are married, some of the separations that are there in marriage to those who are married, who are listening to me, began the day when you told God to wait, let me handle this man, like my baby girl was saying, my own way. Let me handle this woman, my own way. Let me cut my own pound of flesh. Let me treat him. This is what law said. This is what the Bible said. This is that was the day the whole thing started. And you say, God, I don't need you to help me this time. I don't need your guidance. <clears throat> God's servant Bishop David Oyerebo says that, that divine guidance guarantees self arrival. When you, if, that day you decided to say, No, God, I don't want you here. Allow me to deal with this matter my own way. You decided to say that, do whatever that your mind or your knowledge told you, your half knowledge, your half understanding that is short. That day was the day you ignited, you sparked up that fire of the divorce that is now, the separation that is now happening. Some of the decisions you made concerning your job, concerning whosoever and whatsoever, that actually was the day you didn't know that you were making a decision. You were making a decision to finish yourself. You were making a decision to finish your relationship. Yeah. You thought you were making the right choice. You thought we are choosing the right job. You thought we are choosing the right thing, the right pattern, the right way. You didn't know that this decision will finally end up being the undoing of your marriage. Like what I said before, there is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end of that way is the way of destruction. That's why you will need to allow God to lead you in all things, everything that has to do with you in a relationship. Let me stop here today. And um, allow the bigger to come up. And if you have contribution or questions, you can bring them up. We'll and, deal with them together. And my beloved, I love the way the message Bible puts that place of uh, Proverbs 3, 5 to 12. Okay. It says, trust the, trust Lord, the Lord from the bottom of your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, like, we are talking about the singles, you mentioned the singles. Mm -hmm. If as a single person, not just even the single. If you can trust God for a life partner, mm. you know, this issue of thinking that time is no longer on my side, like we created time, 
or somebody's thinking that age is no longer on my side or I'm being pressurized by my society or by my family mm -hmm. to get something done, either to get a job, uh, you are now a graduate, what is the next thing? You should marry and leave the house. You know, by the time we begin to feel that we have these people to satisfy, we have these people to please, and then we we'll rush into taking decisions without letting God lead us, mm. without allowing God to lead us rightly. In this, he, he leads us in paths of righteousness. God is the one that leads us in paths of righteousness, but sometimes we want to rush into leading ourselves mm. in our own way that the, the, the Bible still talked about that way that seems right. That particular way that seems right in the sight of a man, mm -hmm. before your eyes, that particular way you say, this is the best. You are seeing a man physically, you say, this is the best person for me. Mm -hmm. He's handsome, he's good looking, all the good looks are there, but you have not really asked yourself, you have not really paused to ask the Lord, to seek the face of the Lord and trust God to give you a life partner. Now, after graduation, I want to get married. You should have your life figured out as a single that is not yet married. You have your life planned out. And then it's in the Lord. You will make your plans and you will have your trust in the Lord. You will trust him from the bottom of your heart. The Bible says you don't need to start figuring out how he's going to do it. You see, the problem we have most times is that we begin to figure out how God even answer the prayer we are praying. Mm -hmm. You are on your own as a person, so insufficient in knowledge and wisdom, you are beginning to think like the omnipotent, you know, omnipotent Bible called call the call God, the all knowing God. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do we think we, we know, know in comparison with God's knowledge, what God knows? The great plan He has for us, according to Jeremiah 29. Mm -hmm. You know, we begin to figure it out, we begin to plan it out on our way, we begin to think that mm, I will do it like this. We you know, assume that this person who has come now is the best. We don't want God to lead. We don't want God to lead us. You want to pick a, a, a right partner. You don't want God. They're telling you, take your time and pray. Mm -mm. As far as you're concerned, you have already assessed the person. This one will make a good spouse because he's handsome, she's beautiful, and you think all oh, that glitters is going to be good at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You see, there was today. a lot of persons have jumped into relationships because they were so myopic in sight. They couldn't see far, like he said. We don't see too, we don't see much, mm -hmm. you know. We, it can only take the grace of God, the spirit of discernment from God to be able to tell us that this decision we're trying to make right now is going to be wrong. Mm -hmm. And then we can retrace our step. But if you don't want to let God lead you as a single person, I promise you, you're going to pick the wrong spouse and you pick him. So marriages can't even last up to one month. Why? Because God did not lead them. You know, when I read the Psalm 23, I have a clear understanding that God cannot lead me. Uh, he said he leads me in paths of righteousness. righteousness. God cannot lead me into evil because he has a plan. He, he said in Jeremiah, yes, it, besides the still waters, he said he has a plan. Not I know the I, the Lord, knows the thoughts, the plan that I have towards you. Okay, imagine a loving father who has great thoughts and plans for me. Mm -hmm. How can he give me a bad spouse? Mm -hmm. How can he give me a bad child? How can he give me a job that will you know, harm me? A job that will take my life? You know, He has a great plan for me. Mm -hmm. I am the one who don't know about myself. I don't know much about myself. So what do you do as a single person? Or even as a married person, you have to commit your life to his hand. You know, Bible says, commit your ways. Commit your ways, your plan, what you want to do. Your child want to go to school. Commit that school. Is it the will of God for your child? Or you just want to send it because other people are sending their kids and your child will go there and will not come out the way others have come out. Mm. You want to send it because other people, you are, you are seeing your neighbor. You saw your neighbor kids there and they're doing well. Is that the right school for your child? That is that the right place for your child? That place you want to live, is that the right place for you to live? Are you just jumping up because everybody's leaving the country. You too, you want to leave the country, and then you leave the country and you become as miserable as it miserable can be. Because it's not all about location, it's about the God that is with you where you are, it's about the God that is leading you where you are. Bible says he leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, not for your sake, not for your family's sake, for his name's sake. And that, that God is leading you in any way means that he has all it takes to protect you. Yes, his grace can't take you where you be disgraced. If God leads you to that particular environment, he has all it takes to protect you and your children. You will not be a casualty there. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that we have led ourselves into many marriages that have failed and will continue to fail today if God does not intervene. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we are wise in our own understanding. So be not, don't lean on your own understanding. Yeah. 
Bible said you shouldn't lean. It doesn't matter your degree. Forget that. But when it comes to spiritual things, the degree is useless. When it comes to spiritual things, that is why you even see people with the highest degree, they still fail. They still fail woefully in marriage. They still fail financially. They still fail in simple, simple things because it's not about degrees. It's about God that you are leaning on. You don't lean on your own knowledge. You don't lean on your own on the, that you feel you're a great father somebody told me i'm a great father then you look at the kids you know it's not about yourself it's not about your ability it's not about your educational qualification it's about who is leading you who are you leaning on as you're making that decision right now is it are you, is it based on god are you looking up to god are you trusting in him to guide you all right he will guide you in the path of righteousness. And then by the time he has, uh, you have arrived, in, as he's leading you, you arrive. Everybody will know. You, the, the peace you will have in that decision, in that marriage, in that home, even those with the, all the money on earth, they won't even have the peace you yeah. have. You yourself, you are enjoying. They would enjoy what you're enjoying because you allow God to lead you as a single person. I keep telling people that is the best thing that can happen to a man is that God is leading you in anything you're doing because money is not everything. Mm -hmm. Money is not everything. Money cannot even give you happiness. Money cannot give you peace because if God is not in it, you can have the whole money and then you will stay, you will stay have peace. Your health will not be peaceful with you, with your, your body. They won't be together you will be sick you will keep on falling sick because you are in the wrong place but when god is leading you have you wondered why some persons tell you that they are they stay without being sick they don't visit the doctor the hospital from year to year they are living sound everything going on well mm -hmm. you know because it, divine health is your portion even as a child of god do you even have an understanding that in this place god is bringing me people are lacking they say economically things are, are hard but it cannot be hard for you because the lord is your shepherd the person you're leaning on the person you're trusting in and you know what it takes humility to trust in this God we're talking about. Mm -hmm. A lot of persons today cannot let God lead them because of pride, because of arrogance, because they are so proud, so full of themselves. They believe they can do it. You believe you can handle your kids. You have all the time to discipline them. Eh? You have all the money to take care of them. And God is there watching you. The worst is that some people have even said there is no God. Foolish people. They have said that there is no God. And that's what Bible calls them. I didn't call them foolish anyway. You know, a foolish man has said there is no God. When you even say that there is no God, you don't want to believe what we are saying now. But it doesn't still stop you from being a victim of the spiritual forces of this earth. Because Bible calls them spiritual hosts of wickedness. They are on this planet called earth. And I don't fear about the physical one. Because, you know, the physical destruction, the physical wickedness you can avoid. Yeah, if they say it's happening in somewhere in the U.S., you can decide not to travel to the U.S. because you know it's a physical one. You can decide to avoid it. But when it is spiritual, a spiritual host of wickedness, you don't see them, like he said. Spiritual things, the things that are spirit, 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 spiritual things cannot be seen. But the impact and the effect is on you. It doesn't matter whether you are seeing it. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. The impact is on you. The impact is on everything that has to do with you. Whether you believe it, whether you don't believe it, the impact is on you. So the things that we should even dread more are the things of the spirit. So if you don't want God to lead you, if you don't want to walk in him, if you don't want to trust in him, tell me how you can survive this world that is full of wickedness. Yeah. How can you survive? How can your kids survive? So you teach them that they are spirit being, living in a physical body, so that before anything will even happen to you, you should first of all interpret it spiritually. Before you begin to run to the doctor to go and give you one diagnosis that does not uh, exist, you know, and then you send panic and fear all over your system, uh -huh. and your system will start deteriorating because of what you have had. Can you just, first of all, deal with it in the spirit? Can you handle it spiritually? Can you bring it before God? Philippians 4, 6 says something. Say, do not be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to your father. It's happening around you. Stop being anxious. That man is not behaving well. He shouldn't give you sleepless night, okay? The solution is very, is very simple. I'm telling you, it is not a difficult thing. That you start going after other ladies or that your wife is no longer, you know, being respectful. She's going after men. It's not a problem. You don't need to panic. You don't need to, you know, worry too much about it. Yeah, there is something you can do. He said in everything, by prayer, supplication, you go to the Lord in prayer. You trust in the Lord, trusting for a change. And you will see the change come when you have, when you put your trust in him. You know, they that put their trust in the Lord, they will not be ashamed. He will not allow you to be ashamed. You will not be dismayed. That particular thing that is happening around your family right now, 
is easy with the Lord. If you can let him come in and lead in that situation, he will tell you, my daughter, you don't have to fight physically. Mm -hmm. No, you don't have to be abusive. No, just do it this way. And you follow the leading of God, mm -hmm. follow the leading of the spirit. You will hear his voice. As I say, you will hear a voice. If you want God to lead you, surely you will hear his voice. I'm telling you, you will hear the voice of the Lord, mm -hmm. either through messages, through your pastor, through messages mm -hmm. like this, through the word of God. You yes, will hear yes. through this spirit dreams. inside of you, through dreams, different ways. God, even through your friend, God will talk to you. God will speak to you. We will surely hear his voice. Mm -hmm. The problem is that we hear. It's not as if we don't hear. Our problem is we don't obey. Mm -hmm. When we hear, we do like we didn't hear. The enemy will still come to distract us that we don't want to pay attention to that particular voice. But as in hearing, you will hear. You will hear him speak to you. You will hear him tell you what to do. Tell you that this is not an issue of beating the child, spanking him always, mm. you know, more discipline. No, he will tell you, this is what you do, my daughter. And it's going to be very simple. Do you know that sometimes things God wants us to do are just sometimes some things that may look very foolish, mm -hmm. you know? After all, it's not the foolish things of this world God have used to, to confirm the, the, the wise. So it may not even be something mighty. It may not even be something difficult that you cannot achieve. It may be something very foolish. It may look so, so, uh, this may look so stupid you mean i should just do this 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 kind of thing yeah that's what can work you will hear his voice just you you just only need to allow him to lead you and when he's leading you my dear he will lead you aright god is the only one that will lead you aright your friend can mislead you and tell you don't marry that guy whereas he, he has an eye uh, she has an eye on the guy even when she you doesn't know? have an eye even when she doesn't have an eye she doesn't the, see far the motive may be very yeah the person is not even seen yeah does not see far so how can you even think a man can lead you how can you even think your friend can lead you it's mm -hmm. worse to say that people go running to their to their friends to decide you are showing them picture how do what they think about this most time? of the people you know? Fred, I'm sorry, most of the people <laughs> That today, this is about 15 years of marriage, 10 years of marriage. The sister was talking to me. They will share the same thing. Because most people, some of you that are online listening to me, the day you were getting married, even now I ask myself, how did this lady accept to marry me at that time? Only I believe that God led her. See, so it could not just be, I didn't mm -hmm. stop this, it could not just be that the person mm -hmm. has an eye. Mm -hmm. The point Already is that thing, if yeah. you do not have, the person doesn't understand or hear God, the person cannot lead you where. It's only God that can lead you for you to know that this person that is coming now, though the person looks rich, according to people who mm -hmm. want rich, these riches can only last for five years and you will suffer the rest of your life and nothing can change it. And this same person that you are, this other one you are seeing now that looks poor is going to become one of the greatest men or women in the next five, 10 years. That is how it is. Some who jump into relationships that the way the wife cannot get pregnant, the woman, can, the, the husband cannot. I said that some of those things have been, they were there from the very first day. Only that I have, have, canceled, I have had people say, I don't know why I entered. God told me, see why I should have married this person, see the person I married. And this person cannot consider that the, the, these things cannot go on. So it has always been there. It's not just, it might not be because of the bad. Why? Because she said, we are limited. I told us we are limited in sight. What do you know? Mm -hmm. Tell me what you know. I, you do know what's happened, going to happen the next hour. And nobody on earth can say it. It's only this God who is in heaven who knows what's going to happen in the next hour. So, how do you think that this person that you are holding now, eh, that the person will be still the same person next year, next 20 years? Accepting is the Lord that's leading you. And that's why you have to know. Who is leading you, and you have to align God to lead you in decision making. You see, Beb made mention of something. Some of the things you think that are medical conditions, you may go to the doctor. They tell you the doctors will have a name for it, but they are actually projections that we are projected in the realms of the spirit into your body. I'm not afraid to say this. I'm not also too, I'm not saying wrong. I'm telling you what I'm opening your eyes today. There's projections. They were projected. Somebody I know very well was projected. They projected a head condition. The person continued to have a migraine until the day the person died because the, the political opponent said that you, this office that you beat me, you won't last there. He stayed only three, four months. They projected that thing into his head and he started having a headache. He never enjoyed that office until the day he died. And that opponent became the, the senator. So I don't know who is listening to me. 
I don't know your class. See, this, this the word is lived from the reins of the spirit, and you've got to know it. So, some things you are calling medical conditions in your child, there are projections. I try making a family to know that. So, God will not be the omega of what He is not the alpha. So, whatever be decision, whatever be the marriage, whatever be as a couple, whatever you want to do, let it be that God is the one leading. Then if you want to go, go into marriage, let it be that God is the one leading because he cannot be the omega of what is not the alpha. God doesn't finish what he didn't start. So if you actually want him to work in your life, in that project, in that contract, in that building, in that school of your child, in that your own school, let him be the one who will be the beginning. And then you have all the best. You are not sure he's with you and you're still going to omega it. If you have, we're going to stop here today because of time. If you have, say, Rod, please help us to do things. It's a prayer. Okay, it's a prayer. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. So if you have any question or contribution, you can make it right now. Otherwise, we'll tie up here. Let God be the one leading you in everything. I mean, everything about your life. No matter, babe, you brought a scripture that is one of the scriptures that are powerful. See, do not lean on your own understanding because your understanding, as no matter how powerful it is, is still limited. Do not lean on it. Ask, still ask God to lead you. One of the scriptures that came to me while we are talking, and I must say it, is in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. When one of the greatest prophets that ever lived on earth, prophet Samuel, went to go and anoint a, a king in the house of Jesse, Bible says, that when he saw Eliab, he said, behold, God. He started, he started telling God. See, it's, it's most, I want you to understand, it must not be coming from a devil. It must not be coming from somebody who doesn't know God. It must not be coming from a prophet that is not preaching well, not teaching well. Or if no, it, see, it can come from a even prophet. That is to say, if God didn't intervene, mm -hmm. someone would someone have, would have anointed yeah. Eliab to They're be the king of Israel. He, or would have anointed the second son or the third son. The Bible says, no. God said, no, I've rejected this. I have the one that is after my heart. And he wasn't even there until he was brought. And that's, his name is David. And David came to be, if not the best king that Israel ever had, the man that God said, this is a man after my own heart. See, let me conclude by saying, young people who are still listening to us, God will give you a man after his own heart if you allow him to lead you. God will give you a lady, a wife after your own heart, after his own heart. If you allow him to lead you, who, who that are married, God will lead you into the success, the good success that is after his own heart, the riches and the wealth, the fulfillment of your destiny. If we allow him to lead us, we'll pray. Father, we'll pray. Father, we'll pray. Our people have heard us. We'll pray that you, as some have really opened up their hearts unto you. For leading. Nobody's a champion in this field, Lord. It doesn't matter the height. There are great men of God, Lord, we know. Your servants. It was at the later time of their, their, the, the, of their lives that they veered off because they didn't allow the leading. So nobody's a champion here. Father, we pray that you will help us to submit to your leading. Both those who have been making mistakes before, Father, we pray for the enablement of your spirit. Those who are still doing well, we pray for greater strength to continue to allow you, obey you, to let you lead them in making every decision. Those who are younger people, oh Lord, we pray for them. As they make decisions for who to live with, help them to make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. Those who are in relationships that you didn't leave them, they are struggling with it because they believe the guy has money, the guy is loving, the lady is fine. This Father, we pray that you give them the grace to make the change right now when it is not yet late. Father, thank you for doing it. Mm -hmm. Help all of us. Help pastors, leaders of churches to make right decisions that will enlarge the kingdom of God. Help the, the leaders of our nations to make right decisions that will, that will better the economy of nations, better the, make the citizens have a better life. We pray for the government of every nation, using this nation of Canada as point of contact, that you will help the leaders make the right choices, make the right decisions, 
make the right policies, allow you to lead them, that it shall be well with the people that are being led. Father, thank you for answer. Blessed be your holy name. Mm. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. If you are listening to us on Facebook, on Zoom, anywhere you are, and you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, that is to say, you have not even allowed God to have his way in you. Can you invite Jesus now? As you put your hand on your chest, call him, say, Jesus, come into my heart. I know you died for me, and I know you paid all the price. I know you want, you love me so much. You want to lead me. You want that things will be well with me. I pray today that you forgive me my sins. And wash me with your blood. I pray that you give me your power to be your own, to be led aright in the path of righteousness, that nothing, no, no, no shadow of death shall overwhelm me, shall take my life, but your goodness and your mercies shall be my portion. Thank you, Jesus, for doing it for me. Amen. Father, we pray for them all who have made the decision. We pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you receive them. Pray that they be given the power of the Holy Ghost to be led by you from today henceforth. To be led in the paths of righteousness. To enjoy the goodness of the Lord. The dividends of your coming and dying, resurrecting and ascending and coming by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. That person that is saying right now, I used to be led by God. But I just decided to do things on my own way, in my own way, and I had this problem. I'm praying for you now by the leading of the Holy Ghost. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you be forgiven. And the, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the eternal covenant, speak for you right now. I pray that the Lord wash you. And as the as a loving father he is, which he showed us in the story of the prodigal son. May he receive you back right now. Yeah. Um, today, may he show you mercy and come into your life and begin to help you by his mercy and by his grace, by his power that recreates, mm -hmm. to begin to, by his power that restores, to begin to remedy. In fact, by his power, that, by his power of speed. Somebody, you have made a decision and you are delayed, you have veered off the track and you are backwards. But now you have realized. Some few days you have realized. Some few years you have realized. Now, you are running behind schedule. I pray that the Lord shall grant you speed. Amen. And those who are struggling, somebody who is hearing us now, and you say, no, I am one, one, a victim of what you are saying because I just do things my own way. I do things my own way. Not every time I want God. At my workplace, my business, my marriage, I just do things. But today I've had an unknown. Father, I pray for them that... You are a merciful God. You pray that you forgive them and wash them with your blood. And today, Lord, start a relationship with them. Lord, a one-man school with, for them where you will not be their guardian, be their leader, be their director. You lead them in the path of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I pray for two things for them, for your restoration mm -hmm. of the things they have lost mm -hmm. by reason of your divine mercy and by reason of the blood of mercy. I also pray for speed to be able to recover because when you forgive, you remember no more. Lord, as you are forgiven, I pray you restore. Mm -hmm. Let testimonies come forth. As they are hearing us now, mm -hmm. the person is hearing right now. Mm -hmm. Lord, and has said amen to this, will say amen to this prayer. Let the miracle begin right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. And this person shall testify that you are a loving Father. Mm -hmm. Be that glorified. Be that way exalted. Help them in the marriages. Help them in their relationships that they are struggling in now. Because of just struggling with Lord, because of wrong decisions. Let your mercy speak. Yeah. Let your mercy speak. Yeah. Let your mercy speak. Some put children in wrong schools. Some enter wrong businesses. Father, let your mercy speak. Yeah. Lord, Lord, let there be restoration. Yeah. And let there be speed. Thank you, Father. For give them people to are here. Let there be rebuilding of marriages, of relationships that I don't know what, what it is. Is it business? Let there be a rebuilding. Let the grace of rebuilding, the grace of rebuilding. I will say you are the one that built. Except when you build in vain, the laborers level. Father, I pray by your mercy, by your mercy, help, enter, intervene to rebuild. Thank you, Father, for answer. Well, in Jesus' gracious name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 If you are saying amen to that prayer, then it's settled. 
Remember, if you are in Nigeria, in that area, you can always listen to us again tomorrow on Sundays, every Sunday, 8.30 p.m. Nigerian time uh, on Love FM, 104.5 FM Abuja. If you are outside Nigeria, any part of the world, that same time, it's that Nigerian time, at www.lovefmabuja.com, you are going to, you to watch us. You, sorry, please. If not, you, you, you will listen to us. <laughs> Don't mind the, the devil trying to bring network issues sometimes, but then it's there. So, so you will listen to us. We listen to it from here in Canada, and I'm sure any part of the world where you are, you will listen to it again, and you are blessed. If you are in Morovia, in Liberia, in Guinea, in Conakry, in those, those areas in Ivory Coast, then you can always listen to the Marriage Week International programs on <laughs> EWA Radio on every Friday. 7.30 p.m. Morovia time. 7.30 p.m. ELWA Radio, 94.5 FM. You will hear the program and you will be blessed. Not this particular message, but other life-transforming messages that will transform your life. God bless you. Happy weekend. Yeah. All of you that are online on Facebook, on YouTube, I've Thank seen all so of much. you. Amen. Stella, you see, you see all of you. God bless you all. God bless you. Hi, Jane. God bless you all on Facebook and on YouTube. And also on Zoom. Bye. Happy weekend. See you next week. Bye. Bye.